Praise God for another day. Today I'm going to be working on some more mushroom logs. So I have two set up right here. I have one group of logs, I guess I'll call them, soaking still. So we're going to put those on this extra pallet right here. Just to go through a few of my thought processes really quickly. I put everything on pallets to kind of give it an air gap. So most fungus are going to be found in the ground and I just want to give the fungus I'm trying to get into these logs a head start. So I put, the, I put a piece of cardboard down below the pallet to kind of block anything from coming up. Certainly the pallet has been outside. It is contaminated with one type of fungus or another, but for the most part, it's gonna be dry, especially compared to the ground. It'll have that extra little plywood or It'll have that extra little cardboard on the bottom, so it's a little bit off the ground. And for the most part, I mean, yes, I am spraying it down with water every day, which I need to do. That second piece of cardboard, which I'm going to lay down, will hopefully be the barrier to keep the, whatever is in the pallet from coming up into the wood. So, in these logs, I've tried to inoculate them with blue oyster. We will see potentially in a few years if that worked or not. And then these next logs are oak and I'm gonna try to do lion's mane in these. So I'll put the cardboard down, we're gonna set the logs up and then I'm gonna let the next set of logs soak for a few hours before we inoculate with the mushrooms. So later on in the evening, I will continue the video and we will watch the rest of that. So as of right now, we're just gonna set them up and we're not inoculating with mushrooms, but we'll come back to that. For you, it will be almost instantaneous. But I cut these logs from the tree. This is the cap. And this will be the face that will rest on top. So this is like the very top. So it's kind of like a sandwich technique. You put the mushroom spores underneath the log, as you'll see, and then on top, and then you put another log, and then you put more mushroom spawn on top of that top log, and then the cap. So I didn't soak these logs at all before I inoculated them. We'll see if that ends up failing or working for me again down the road. These logs I've soaked overnight. Some people suggest 24 hours. If you have a container large enough to soak all your wood for 24 hours, then that's great. I don't. So rather than risk killing the mushroom spores by leaving them out basically either in the fridge once I open the bag or leaving them out in ambient temperature, I'm just going to kind of go for it with what I have and hopefully at least one set of these logs will work out. So I did try to mark them with pencil to know which one is which as far as how they were set up, but the pencil seems to have come off in the water. One good thing to note is that the logs are significantly more heavy now that they've been soaking, so they should definitely be a good place for the mushroom to basically set up shop. getting the logs, picking the logs up while they're still submerged in the water. And then they become very heavy afterwards. So I believe this is a middle piece, I believe that is the bottom piece. I'm going to try to wet fit them together before tonight. An 
even though I just cut this log down, I think two weeks ago, there is significant difference. I can tell in both the weight of the soaked logs and just how much these logs are taking in. You can see bubbles coming up. So if I was to do this again and the oak logs are successful, I would definitely just take the time to buy a second 55 gallon you know, trash bucket or maybe just be resourceful with whatever I had. soak enough logs to use all your spores is a better way to go rather than trying to do it dry because it it's not that hard to soak them overnight but hopefully you know it makes it worthwhile because the mushrooms like moist environments one of the challenges of growing mushrooms in March so as far as the weather is concerned, it's probably a good time to start with heat and cold, but as far as the humidity is concerned, March is actually the least humid month in the whole year for Texas. So as far as humidity is concerned, it's probably not great, but for temperature, it's you know on the right end of things. You could definitely start it in the fall in Texas, and that could be a lot better as long as your trees are in a good place to be cut down. So you don't want, you want them to be like turning brown, the leaves to be turning brown. But in Texas, as far as I've seen from my first year here, the leaves don't necessarily turn that much. They just kind of start falling. So I don't know exactly the best time of year to do it yet, but hopefully just constantly spraying these logs down each day will get us through this dry month and the humidity will start back up and we'll see a year or maybe two years from now if, if this actually pays off. So a few hours have passed. I'm gonna pull the other logs out. necessarily bring the spores into my house so they arrived in a sealed package I put them in the fridge for a few weeks kept them in the sealed package and they're gonna get thrown out I've dealt with mold and fungus for long enough I don't want anything accidentally growing inside my house but without further ado I'm gonna pull the other log out bees drip for a little while so As you heard in the rest of the video, it was very windy when I was recording this, so I decided just to go with the voiceover. What I'm doing right now is pulling 
the fresh mushroom spawn out of the packaging and creating a little one inch layer on the cardboard for where the log will sit down. And I chose this method because it was quite a bit easier than drilling holes into smaller logs and inoculating them that way. You might, as far as fruiting goes, get a little bit more from that technique, but just with time constraints and the many projects I have going on, I decided to go with something that maybe would have a little bit less output, but would certainly be less input as well. So you put a little bit of a pancake down on the very bottom of the log, and that's to start the mushrooms growing up. And then you put some in the middle to sandwich them to both go down for this log and then up for the next log. And then we'll put some in between the top piece and the cap to again, bring the mushrooms down. So this video is at two times speed to just kind of go through the process a little bit faster than what it was happening in real time. But it's still kind of, you know, a little slow, a little tedious. Just figured I'd show each step of the way so that if you wanted to try it yourself, you'd have an idea. Obviously there's plenty of other videos on YouTube to see this, but this is my attempt at doing it. And hopefully there'll be a video a year or two down the road where I get to show exactly what happened. So once you're done with the top layer, then all you have to do is put the cap on. And then I put a little piece of basically cardboard paper or construction paper over the top of the cap, as you can see in the other log to the right. And that's just to help try to keep some of the moisture in. It's a very dry month this month. We're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, but overall it's been very dry, like humidity below 50%. So you just rest the cap on top. I kind of wiggle them together. I tried my best to cut these logs straight so that they would rest on each other well. Some people don't bother to that. And if you have kids or pets or something like that, you might want to try to make the logs straight so that they rest on each other and don't accidentally get knocked over. Because these logs are pretty heavy, like they would definitely hurt a child if it fell on top of them. So that's pretty much it. I just repeat this process and add the second stack and then I'll water them each day and try to keep everything moist. Hopefully that'll work. Hopefully soaking them helped. I certainly would try to soak them a little bit longer next time, but I was just trying to get it done. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to stick it out, I'll add some music till the very end. But if you could, please subscribe. I would appreciate it. Let me know what your favorite kind of mushroom is in the comments below. God bless. And hopefully I'll see you again soon.